the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and calleth thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they shall strive, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. As we were ending, the, as the, the, the year was coming to an end on 2016, and I was in a time before the Lord, the Lord gave me this scripture, and it really ministered to me, and I hope it will minister to you as it ministered to me. The background of this scripture is that this is when Israel was in exile. They, they were taken captive. And, and uh, they were in bondage to a heathen king. And God speaks this prophetic word over them right before uh, he releases uh, the the anointing of Cyrus, the anointed Cyrus, the king, that would deliver them and rebuild their temple. And God is speaking to them while they're in, in exile in a, in a place of, of, of uh, bondage to, a, to, a, uh, to a, a wicked heathen king. And God speaks this word to them to encourage them and to let them know that he had not forgotten them that he still had them on his heart and that he was going to do something to deliver them from that bondage that they were in and that God was going to bring them to the place where they would be back in their land, where they would be back, they would have their temple again, they would be able to worship again. God was going to bring them back from what it looked like hopelessness and bring them into a place of complete and total reestablishment in their land and their temple. So he says to them, Israel, my servant Jacob, in the eighth verse, I have chosen the seed of Abraham, my friend. And then in verse number nine, he says, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. One of the things that we must understand is, is that we belong to God. We belong to God. God has chosen us. And since he has chosen us and he has called us out of darkness into this marvelous light, given us his salvation, given us his name, we have become his responsibility. And he's saying to Israel, we know that Israel was God's chosen people. They were the children of Abraham. He identifies them as Abraham's seed, he identifies them, praise God, as Abraham's seed, his friend. Their relationship was based on, praise God, a covenant that God made with Abraham. Well, let me ex let you know that we are in covenant with God, and our covenant, praise God, is based on Abraham. We are the children of Abraham by faith. So this word that God is given to Israel not only applies to Israel, but it also applies to us because we are the seed of Abraham. And he called them. He said, I've called you. I've chosen you. We are a chosen generation, a holy priesthood, a peculiar people. We are a people called by his name and we are his responsibility. God has not forgotten us. We may feel like we are exiled 
on an island by ourselves. We may feel like, praise God, that we've been isolated and we've been abandoned. But God speaks here, praise God, to Israel. And I love, starting at the 10th verse, I love this. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Translation for more clarity. In the 10th verse, it says, fear not. There is nothing to fear. Look at your neighbor say, there is nothing to fear. Fear not. We have to always be, when God starts telling you and speaking these words to tell you that you don't have to fear, amen, that fear not, he's about to tell you something, praise God, that will allay all of your fears, all of your doubts, all of your concerns are going to be dealt with. And he says, praise God, fear not, there is nothing to fear, for I am with you. That ought, to, that ought to encourage many of us. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, that you might boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. In other words, praise God, God will not leave you. God is with you. He says, don't fear because I'm with you. In other words, praise God, I am Emmanuel right there with you. You know what Emmanuel means? It means God with us. In other words, praise God, you don't have to fear because God is right there by your side. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that's encouraging to know that God is with us. And so you don't have to fear. You know, it's, it's one thing, praise God, to have to, praise God, to, 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 to say fear not. But it's another thing to say fear not because I'm with you. Because that means, praise God, that you're not by yourself. You are not alone. God is right by your side. God is walking with you. I know you think you're exiled and nothing is going, praise God, your way. And it looks like God has abandoned you. I want to assure you that God has not left you, that God is right there with you. When you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is still with you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not let you down. He is right there with you. Thank you, Jesus. Fear not, God is with you. And if God be for you, who can be? Thank you, Jesus. That should just, that, that, that's enough to take away your fear. But he says this, he says, fear not for I am with you. He said, do not look around you in terror and be in dismay. For I am your God. I'm with you. And I'm your God. In other words, I'm with you. You know, it's, you, know you, you can have folk with you. But if they don't have no power, you know, you've got folk with you that's scarier than you are. <laughs> you know, here it is, you scared, they scared. But he says, I'm with you and I'm your God. In other words, praise God, I am not limited. I am God. So not only am I with you, I want you to know that I am your God. I'm with you, and I'm powerful, and I'm almighty, and I praise God, and I can take care of everything and anything that comes against you. In other words, praise God, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like, it reminds me of, of when I was growing up. You know, it's, it, in, my, in my family, it's 15 of us, 10 boys, 5 girls. I'm number 13. I'm the I'm the uh, the second youngest boy, and uh, and uh, I remember praise God sometime when you know when uh, when when I would get uh, confronted by someone that was bigger than me or whatever you know they're gonna fight me you know or whatever and you know and so uh, I would talk to my big brother I would you know talk to one of my big brothers and say you know hey you know they're gonna get me you know and, and so my brother I, I you know so you know Timus and. And Robert and Richard and Sam and Paul and Emmett. And, they say, and so when yeah, I'd get one of my big brothers to come with me, you know, and, you know, y'all gonna, y'all gonna get me, you know, here's my big brother. I, I you know, I, before I, <laughs> when, they, when they tell me that my knees might be knocking together, but when my big brother get with me? <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. I'm, one of my older brothers, Timus, is shorter than I am. Timus is my older brother. He's five years older than me, he's, he's, but he's shorter than me. And I remember one time I was 
I was at, we were at the swimming place on Kimini Center. We out there to swim, and a yeah, guy comes up and pushes me out of the line and everything and so on and so forth and, and so on. And I told him, I said, I'm going to get my big brother. <laughs> and so I went and got Timas, and Timas came up. Timas was, some, you know, I mean, so he came up, and they was, and uh, the guy was like, this your big brother? The guy was taller than him. And Timus jumped up, you know, because Timus was short, but he'd jump up and hit you like Popeye. <laughs> and I'll never forget it. He beat the boy up. And the boy, and, and the boy was taller than Timus. Went home and got his daddy. His daddy came up. His daddy came up thinking he had been, you know, and came up and he said, where's the boy at? And then Timus was standing there with his little, so he looked at him and said, and then he just turned around to his boy and started popping him upside. Get out of here. You let that little boy beat you up. <laughs> well, that's just a funny story. But it's something about when you have somebody with you that's greater than you, that's more powerful than you, that can take up for you, praise God. It's something about that, praise God, that it gives you a boldness, praise God, and it eliminates your fear. And I remember sometime, I remember when I, when I went to, uh, when I went to, came into high school, they, the reputation of the Hogans had already preceded me. And so when people would confront and say, man, you know, they would be messing with me or something. So one of the guys would say, man, don't mess with him. That guy got 40 brothers. <laughs> now, now, I didn't have, but <laughs> you know how they exaggerate. Say, man, you better not mess with them Hogans, man, because you mess with one, you got to mess with all of them. Well, when you mess with, when, when the devil messes with you, he got to mess with your God. The devil don't know who he's messing with when he messes with. It was like when Paul was on the road to Damascus, praise God, and he was going there. Saul was going there to kill Christians. And Jesus knocked him off his beast, knocked him on the ground. And Jesus said to Paul, Paul, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? In other words, he didn't say he was killing Christians, but God was saying, you messing with me. Look at your neighbor and say, if you mess with me, you got to mess with my God. You mess with me, you got to mess with God. You mess with me, you got to mess with the all-powerful, the almighty. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And this was just a, such an encouragement to me. It says, praise God, be not dismayed, I am your God. And, and this is, this is uh, and then he says here, I will strengthen thee. I will strengthen thee. Then he says, yes, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I will strengthen thee. In other words, Fear not, for I'm with you. Fear not, I'm your God. And then God tells you what he's going to do. He said, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to cause, praise God, the places that you are weak in, I'm going to cause you to be strong. In other words, praise God, I'm going to give you a strength that is not a strength based on, praise God, your own limited abilities but I'm going to give you supernatural strength I'm going to give you strength because see when, when, you, when, when, when you're going through situations and circumstances many times what the enemy does is he'll just sap all the strength out of you he'll cause you to feel weak and weary praise God and so when God comes to you praise God what he will do is he will begin to pour into you his supernatural strength. He'll pour in you, praise God, strength for the journey. I will strengthen you. I'm going I'm to make sure, praise God, that where you're weak, you'll be strong. You know, the, there is a scripture in the Bible that says, let the weak say I'm. In other words, praise God, God, when he, God begins to pour into you by his power, the strength, he begins to strengthen you, praise God. He begins to give you, praise God, 
a, a, a new stamina, a new strength, a new ability, because praise God, you're going to need, praise God, to, to be able to stand strong. You're going to be able to, you're going to have to stand up, praise God, stand there for when you've done all to stand. And sometimes it seems like that all your strength is gone, that you are weak. You're about to praise God, fall apart, but God begins to pour into you supernatural strength and you begin to find yourself, praise God, being, praise God, like, like Elijah when he ran before the chariots. The Bible says he told, he told Ahab, he said, Ahab, it's about to rain. It sounds like an abundance of rain. And the Bible says when the rain came that he outran the chariot of Ahab. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody say, new strength is coming. See, some of us, we have been in a battle with the enemy. I know the last seven years, we've been fighting demons and devils, praise God, on every hand. And, and many times, praise God, there's an Old Testament scripture that talks about how the devil will wear, wearing out the saints. Sometimes you feel worn out, you feel drawn out, you feel like, praise God, I'm tired, praise God, I'm weary. But God, in 2017, today, I'm asking God to give you a new strength. I'm asking God to pour out his anointing upon you on the top of your head to the soles of your feet i'm call. i'm asking him to strengthen you praise god to teach your hands to war and your fingers to fight i'm asking god that he will cause praise god strength to come into your body supernatural strength thank you jesus thank you jesus i remember the story of of of, of samson when Samson, praise God, had fought the thousand Philistines and he had, he had defeated them. And the Bible says he was weary. And the Bible says he was weary and tired. And, and then, the, but the Bible says, praise God, and he began to tell the Lord, I'm tired. I feel like I want to die. Praise God. And, and, uh, and, and, he, and the jawbone of the ass that he had used to defeat the enemy, God told him to turn it up and he turned it up and fresh water came out. And the Bible says when the water came out and he drunk the water, that strength came back in his body. Somebody's about to get a drink from the fountain of God uh, that will bring new strength, praise God. You've been in a battle and you feel like that you're weary and you're worn out, but God is about to release a new strength on the inside of you. God is saying, take your weapon and turn it up. And God says, there's water in your weapon. Look at somebody say, there's water in your weapon. Koba shatarabasata. I will strengthen you. In other words, I love this because I love the fact that God is not hemming and hawing. I'm so glad that God is not like, a, I might do it, uh, you know, if this was and maybe, you know, he said, I will. Look at somebody say, I will. That is the strongest affirmation. I will strengthen you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the devil tells you that you didn't run out, everything is gone, just tell him, God will strengthen me. I know he's going to do it. He said he's going to do it. New strength is coming on me now. I'm going to have strength, praise God, to take you out. I will strengthen you. Then he says, yes, I will help thee. Ooh, glory to God. I don't know about you, but I need help. The, the thing that's so, that, that, that's so powerful about this is the way he says it. He doesn't just say, I will help you. He said, yes, I will help you. When you get a God yes, you got a yes. The Bible says the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. In other words, praise God, when God says yes, nobody can say no. When God says yes, the devil can't say no. When God says yes, it is yes and amen. <laughs> it's yes and so be it. He says, yes, I'm going to help you. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, yes, he's going to help you. Yes, he's going to help you. Is he going to help me? Yes, he's going to help me. Because you need help. You need help. You need supernatural help. You need God to put some super on your natural. You need God to do stuff that you can't do. In other words, God, I can take it so far, but I need your help. I can take it to the 
this point, but I need you to stretch it out into the supernatural, into the miraculous, into the exceeding abundantly above all I can ask, think, or imagine. I need you to do some stuff that I cannot do. I need help. Yes, he's going to help you. I wonder, is God going to help me in this? Yes, he's going to help you. I wonder, is God going to help me out? Yes, he's going to do it. He's giving you a yes. Yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. You know what that means? That means he's not going to do it all by himself. He gave you strength. He gave you the Holy Ghost. He gave you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. So he's not going to do it for you. Look at somebody say, he's going to do it with you. He's going to do it with you. In other words, he's going to help you to get it done. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I know it's going to happen is because I'm not doing it by myself. I got some help, some supernatural help. I got some help from heaven. I got some omnipotent help. I got some omnipresent help. I got some omniscient help. I got El, El Shaddai help. I got God that's more than enough help. And praise God. And he's all the help that I need. I will. Yes, I'm going to help you. See, so that's the answer to your prayer. I wonder, is the Lord going to help me get out of this? Yes. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Don't be dismayed. Don't be afraid. Because you got my help. Thank you, Jesus. You know, some things, praise God, will cause you to, to look and, and fear. But when you know that, praise God, that you're not by yourself, that God is your God, and then you know that he's going to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then he says, praise God, yes, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I'm going to uphold thee. Look at somebody say, he's going to strengthen you. Yes, he's going to help you. Yes, he's going to uphold you with the right hand of his power. Uh, see, that, 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 you, you got, that's, a, that's a mouthful of there. That's a mouthful. I'm going to uphold you. That word uphold means, praise God, he's going to stand up for you. That means he's going to stick up for you. That means he's going to support you. That means, praise God, he's going to support you against every opponent. That means he's going to carry you. That means he's going to sustain you. That means he's going to back you up. That means he's going to maintain you. That means he's going to preserve you. That means he's going to keep you going. <laughs> hey, glory to God. I'm going to uphold you. In other words, I'm going to stand up for you. <laughs> See, uphold don't mean just, he just, got, he just holding you. Hold me. Just hold. That, 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 no, no. That, he ain't just going. No, no. When it says he's going to uphold you, it means, praise God, that he's going to stick up for you. That when the devil and the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord is going to lift up a standard against him. It's going to stick up for you. It's going to hold you. It's going to sustain you. It's going to support you. God, praise God, is going to uphold you with the right hand of his power. I'm going to uphold you with the right hand. Of my Do you know that, that the right hand is the power hand? In other words, when it talks about the right hand of God, it's talking about the power of God. In other words, I'm going to uphold you with all of the power, with all of the authority that I have, all of the power that I have in my right hand, praise God. I am going to uphold you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to sustain you. I'm going to stick up for you when the devil comes against you. Praise God, I'm going to stick up for you. In other words, he's going to take up your cause. Thank you, Jesus. 
See, I, I, it's one thing to know he's with you. It's one thing to know he's your God, but it's another thing to know what he's going to do. I need to know what you're going to do, Lord. In other words, I'm going to strengthen you because I want you to be strong, and I'm going to help you because, see, you're going to be doing the fight, and you're going to look like, see, it looked like that Samson was doing the fighting and killing the Philistine, but it was the anointing and the power of God on his life that helped him to do it. Sometimes, praise God, it looks like, praise God, you're standing against circumstances and situations that are so much bigger than you. And what God says, I'm going to strengthen you, praise God, and I'm going to help you, and then I'm going to uphold you. I'm going to take up for you. Where you leave off, I'll pick up. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. In the Amplified, it says, I will hold you up retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. In other words, God's going to make those things that are wrong right. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it, it's, it's, it, and, and God tells you, he tells us here and gives us this prophetic word that he's going to strengthen us. He's going to, he's going to uh, help us. He's going to uphold us. But then he tells us what's going to happen to our enemies. And I love that. In other words, because he's going to do this for you, he's going to deal with folk that's been coming against you. He's going to deal with cases against you and allegations against you. See, because when God starts deal, when God starts standing for you, praise God, and upholding you, praise God, God starts dealing with folk that are against you. In 2017, I believe that, that God is telling us that he's going to strengthen us, help us. He's going to uphold us. But then he says in the 11th verse, Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. In the Amphilite it says, Behold, they who enraged, all they who are enraged and inflamed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. They who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. God's going to deal with our enemies this year. God's going to deal with the naysayers this year. God's going to shut the mouth of the naysayers. God's going to deal with those, praise God, that have come against us. See, vengeance is the Lord. You don't have to go after them. God will go after them. If you allow God to work, praise God, God will shut the mouths of those, praise God, that's been coming against you. God will deal with those, praise God, that said it wasn't going to work. <laughs> those that are enraged against you. Some folk just incensed against you. They just can't stand you, praise God. Oh, you know that you got some folks like that. They just can't stand you. You know, they, they, they want you to fall. They want you to mess. They want you to fall in the pit. They want everything to fall apart. They hoping it fall apart. But what they don't know is that God is with you. What they don't know, praise God, is God is strengthening you. They say, how are you still here? You ought to, you should have been dead a long time ago. Praise God. I thought I, praise God, I thought I knocked you down last week. But you tell devil, devil, I'm standing, praise God, because I'm standing not in my own strength. I'm standing in the strength that God has given me, praise God. And you don't know, devil, God is helping me. The reason I'm still here is because I got some supernatural help from God. Thank you, Jesus. Folk, will, folk get mad at you. Folk, folk want to take you down. I know folks talking about me. That's all right. I, I remember one preacher said, said, said that he, he, he said, you know, he gets criticized. He said, he don't worry about criticizing. He said, I've been criticized by experts. <laughs> folks be incensed. It's amazing. Sometimes God can bless you and folks is mad because you got blessed. God work for you, they get mad. Instead of them saying, oh, praise God. Instead of them rejoicing with them that rejoice, praise God, they get mad because God bless you. 
The moment you learn how to, how, to, how to praise God for somebody else's blessing, God will then bless you. You ought to be able to rejoice with them that rejoice. Maybe you ain't got your miracle yet and somebody else got their miracle. Well, I'm just going to rejoice and praise God for your miracle because I know mine is on the way. And quit being so critical. Thank you, Jesus. They that are incensed, I'm almost through. Against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. They that strive with thee, shall, they shall perish. Then verse 12 said, thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. In other words, praise God, God's going to bring that stuff to nothing. The things that you thought was going to take you out going to come to nothing. Folk that come against you, praise God, don't, don't get mad. Just thank God. Praise God. Let me tell you something. If you are not being persecuted, you ought to check up on your salvation. You ought to check up on whether you're doing the will of God. If nobody's talking about you, Jesus said, praise God, you better, you better be, be very concerned when everybody say everything good about you. Amen. Praise God. He said, when everybody's talking good about you and telling you how good you are, you better be in, you, you might be in trouble there. In other words, praise God. But when you're persecuted, when folk are coming against you, it just means that God is about to do something in your life. The devil knows that the door is about to open for you. Praise God. That's going to break you into the blessings of God. And he's trying his best to get you discouraged. He's trying to knock you off track. He's trying to keep you, praise God, from believing God and continuing to stand. And so he's throwing everything he can at you. But he's going to come to nothing. He's going to come to naught. It's going to perish. Folk better quit messing with me. God will snatch everything from you, everything, take everything from you. You better leave me alone. <laughs> I'm the favorite of God. Thank you, Jesus. Say they're going to come to nothing, incensed. I don't know what they're doing over there. I'm incensed, but God says they're going to come to nothing. And the 13th verse says, and for I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. In other words, God got, got, God's got my right hand. <laughs> God's got my hand. God's got your hand. In other words, praise God, you're not going to fall in the ditch. God's got your hand. You, 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 you're not going to end up, praise God, in jail. God's got your hand. You're not going to be defeated. God's got your hand. How can you be defeated when God's got you by your hand? Thank you, Jesus. That means, praise God, that he's leading me. He's guiding me. He's directing me. He got my hand. In other words, I'm not walking, praise God, just, just blindly. God is leading me. Thank you, Jesus. He's got my hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said, I got you by my right hand. By, I hold thy right hand. In other words, my right hand holds your right hand. And I'm helping you. I don't know about you, praise God. But when I begin to, to read that, it began to speak to me so clearly. And the three things that, that stood out was strengthen, help, and uphold. In other words, God is strengthening us, helping us. And upholding us. He's got my back. He's taking up for me. He's sustaining me. He's backing me up. It's one thing when you got God backing you up. When you speak something and praise God. And God, praise God, backs up your word. If the Bible says that, that the prophet Samuel, God would not allow one of his words to fall to the ground. In other words, God backed it up. How would you like, praise God, that when you speak something, God back you up? How would you like, praise God, when you declare something that all of heaven is backing you up, that a myriad of angels and is backing you up, that you're backed up by God? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. The Lord has spoken to me many times. He said, I got this. I love it when he says that. I got this. Oh, you ain't going. In other words, he's like telling, say, you ain't going to fight in this battle because I got this. You ain't going to have to worry about those folk no more because I got this. 
You remember what God told him? God told Israel, he said, you, you see Pharaoh and his army, you ain't going to see him no more. In other words, some things, praise God, God will deal with, praise God, and you won't have to deal with them no more. Now, if you try to fight the battle, then you, praise God, you try to do it yourself, praise God, then God can't back you. But if you allow God to do it, God will back you up. God will back up your words. God will back up your fight, praise God, and God will make sure that you're victorious. 13, he says, and the Lord says, I will hold you with your right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. In the Amplified Translation, it says, for I, the Lord thy God, hold your right hand. I am the Lord who says to you, fear not, I will help you. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. Look at your neighbor and say, fear not. Yeah. There's some things that, 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 that I've been dealing with, and I've been kind of a little nervous about them. And, and I'm letting this minister to me today. Fear not. Because, you know, in the natural, many times you can, you know, your natural feelings will have you feeling a, a bit, you know, antsy about it and, and nervous about it. And I said, Lord, I ain't never been this way before. Have you ever been to a, going to a place and, 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 and that you've never been before. God's taking you to a place that you've never been before. And praise God. And it's, and, and it's a bit scary. But, but I thought about Joshua when he told them. He said, he said to. to uh, I believe he said gird up yourselves. He said for you have not been this way before. In other words God's taking you to places. That you've never been before. God is about to do something so awesome in this year. I believe with all my heart that God's going to do something so awesome. And that God's going to give us a new strength. He's giving us a, a, a strength for this, for this new season that he's taking us into. And we need supernatural strength. We cannot. This is, this is so awesome. It is so different from the, any place that we've been before living bread. It, it's so different from any, any uh, road that we've tread before until, praise God, we're going to need his strength. And then we're going to need him to take us by the hand and walk us through it. In other words, praise God, we are not going to walk through this thing alone. God is going to take us through. He's going to get our hand and he's going to walk us through it. This is a great time that we're entering into. And God is doing a marvelous work on our behalf. If you're standing in the house of the Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm through. He will strengthen you. Strengthen you. If you're weak, he'll strengthen you. Even if you don't think you're weak, you still need God's strength. Because you need supernatural strength. It's going to take supernatural strength in order to walk through what God is about to take us through. We're about to, we're about to get, have vineyards that we didn't plant. We're about to have, praise God, houses that we did not build. Whole new, new way of living. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's lift our hands and give God praise for what he's doing in this new season. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing in this new season, oh God. We thank you for the strength that you're giving us right now. Come on, just receive his strength right now. New strength, Lord, for the battle. New strength for the voyage. New strength, oh God, for the journey. Let your strength come upon your people, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. New strength, new strength, new strength, new strength. Strengthen us, O oh God. New strength, O oh God. New strength, O oh God. Father, we thank you, O oh God, and we give you praise. We give you thanks, Lord, that you're giving us help from the sanctuary, O oh God. Help from the heavenlies, O oh God. Supernatural help, O oh God. Lord, we need supernatural help. 
We need help, oh God, that goes beyond the natural realm. Lord, we need help, oh God. We need miracles, oh God. We need the miraculous help of God. Help us, oh God. You said you would. Help us, oh God. Father, I don't know what your people are facing. I don't know what they're going through, Lord. But let this word, oh God, be a prophetic word to them that you're helping them. You're going to help them through every circumstance and situation. And they're not going to be by themselves. That they need, need not fear. They need not be afraid. For you're with them, oh God. And you are their God. You belong, we belong to you, oh God. We are children of Abraham by faith. Lord, and release, oh God. Uphold us, oh God. Stick up for us, oh God. In the courtroom. Oh God. Lord, every place, oh God, that we face opposition, oh God. Uphold us. Stick up for us. Stand up for us. Sustain us, oh God. Let the word of the Lord penetrate our hearts today, Lord. Every obstacle, every demon and every devil that stands to block us, we command it to be removed in the name of Jesus. We say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that those that stand against us will be removed. Those that oppose us, will come to nothing every scheme of the enemy every assignment of the devil is canceled over our life lord we thank you for victory we thank you lord jesus that you have taken us to places that we've never been before you're taking us into places of wealth and prosperity and blessing that we've never experienced before lord we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory I hear the Lord saying that this is a new day for you that will receive it. For I'm causing you to walk through the fire and the flood, not be burned or drowned. I'm causing you to walk on the high places of the earth, says the Lord. And I'm causing you to be the head and not the tail and above only and not beneath. I'm breaking off the shackles of an old poverty mentality and a mentality of defeat. But I'm bringing you into the place where you will begin to think victory, walk victory, accept victory, have victory. For I'm a victorious God. I triumphed over all the kingdoms of darkness and I've given you the authority. I've crowned you as kings and priests in the kingdom to stand and decree and declare. And yes, and this shall be a time of the declarations and the decrees of my people. For well, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. I tell you to go and speak to those dry bones and those places that are dry and dead in your life and in your circumstance and command them to live. For it shall not be just your words, but it is backed up by my words, says the Lord. I'm backing up your words. I'm backing up your words, says the Lord. Decree it, declare it, and it shall be established, says the Lord. For I'm giving you back the land that you lost. I'm giving you back the properties that you've lost. I'm giving you back that that has been stolen and taken away from you. This shall be a year of great redemption and, and recovery, says the Lord. So know this, that this is a time and a season that I'm pouring to you the strength, my strength. I'm pouring into you my strength. I'm giving you my help and I'm upholding you and backing you up. So go in the strength of my power and my anointing and know that everything that lies before you, every crooked place will be made straight. I will cause the mountains to become a plain, says the Spirit of the Lord, and you shall walk on a level place, says the Spirit of God. I'm coming to you in a new way, says the Lord. I'm coming to you with power and glory and might and dominion. And I will speak to you in the still small voice in the wee hours of the morning, says the Lord, as you spend that time before me. And the Lord says, I shall direct you in pathways of peace and blessing. And the enemy has tried to keep you back and hold you into an old paradigm, an old mindset. But I'm breaking off the old mindsets and I'm aligning you with heaven, says the Spirit of God. I'm bringing you into agreement with me and breaking you out of agreement with the world and the system of the world. 
The Lord says as you turn away from the world and from the system and from the culture that is popular, says the Lord, and turn to me with your whole heart, with all of your mind and your spirit, even as I brought Israel out of exile, brought them back into their land and gave them back their temple. The Lord says, I will bring you back to a place of blessing and I will establish you in a wealthy place, says the Spirit of God. So know this, this is a time and a season that I'm breaking off the old and bringing you into the new. And you shall see my hand, says the Lord. Did I not say my right hand of my power will be for you? And the Lord says, and I will uphold you and I will carry you during this season, says the Lord. And I even hear the Lord saying that there has been such a drag upon you over the last seven years, says the Lord, that has caused you to be weary. But the Lord says, I'm breaking off the weariness and I'm giving you a new freshness. I'm giving you fresh anointing, says the Lord. I'm giving you new wine and fresh oil on your life, says the Lord. You shall begin to walk in a new level of blessing and power. And the Lord says, your mouth shall be filled with laughter, for I'm about to turn your captivity. I'm about to change things, praise God, that look like they could not be changed. Not just because, praise God, of you, but because of my word. I will not allow my word to come back to me void. I have prophesied to you. I have sent my word through my prophet, says the Lord, to cause you to begin to rise up in new strength and power. And some of you have resisted the word, but I hear the Lord saying, but if you will embrace my word today, you will see my hand and my hand will bring you to victory and you shall see my glory revealed in your life. And the Lord says in 2017 will be a year that you will rejoice in me like you've never rejoiced before because I've turned your captivity. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. I hear the Lord saying, suddenly moments shall happen to you. Suddenly things shall turn around. Suddenly things shall be put in place. Suddenly doors shall be opened. Suddenly miracles shall happen. Suddenly your health shall rise again. Suddenly the voice of the Lord shall be strong on you. Suddenly is about to happen, says the Lord. So get ready for those suddenly moments, says God. Oh, Rabbi Shanda. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. Lord, let your strength come upon them right now. New strength. The Lord is removing that weariness. That weariness is going now. That weariness that sat on your shoulders like a weight. Rabbi Shaka. Is lifting right now. It's lifting right now. It's lifting right now. That weariness is coming off of you right now. It's coming out of your shoulders. It's coming out of your neck. Ebroskitaya. In the name of Jesus. The weariness is going now in Jesus' name. And a freshness. A freshness. Freshness. Fresh wind of God blow upon you. Breath of God on your face. Breath of God on your face. Receive the breath of God. Oh, Rabbi Shanda. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the presence of God is in this place. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. He's here to fulfill every word that he spoke today. Fear not. For I'm with you. Fear not. I'm your God. Be not dismayed. I've got you. Got you covered. I'm covering you. I'm protecting you. I'm bringing you. I'm backing you. I'm sustaining you. I'm strengthening you. I'm working in you. All things are working together for your good. I got everything in my hand. I will not let you fall. I'll not, not, not let you fall. You will not falter. You will not fall. You will not stumble. I'm with you, says the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you that you died for us, gave your life sacrifice. If you're in this place and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're not born again. I want to give you an opportunity to make 